Um, so, sine a power of sine pair power of cosine. If I have to split one of them, which one should I worry about? The sine part or the cosine part? The sine. Why? The sine. Did you say sine or cosine? Huh? You changing your mind? Is it the sine or the cosine? Oh, cosine. Okay. The cosine. Why the cosine change? It is odd, and our objective is to get to the sine part or uh, the identity, or even part of the sine, sine squared, even part of the cosine, identity, cosine squared. So I want an even power for both. So I've got to split. The cosine. Now I'm guessing closer to the identity sine squared x plus cosine squared equals one. And whichever term you split, the opposite of that must be your u. So in this case, u would be sine x. Yes. The u over dx will be cosine x dx. Do you over dx is cosine x? You'll get cosine x dx. So u raised a sine raised to the a power of x. Cosine squared, we want to write it in terms of sine. This is where the identity comes into play. I don't want to skip a step, which is why I'm writing this. Do you? I can now replace sine squared x in terms of u. u is cosine, I'm um, sorry, sine. So u raised 8 times 1 minus u squared, followed by to u. Good. I can distribute u raised 8. U raise 8 minus U raise 10 times the U. What is the integral of U raise 8? What? What? How do I understand? I keep hearing 9, 9, but 9 what? U raise 9. 9 inch day? Never mind, it's a bad joke. Move it off. You know the bound language still. Don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think my age just came out of it. Let's ignore that. You raise A. What is it? I just want to answer anymore. You raise 9 over 9. <laughs> and what about the integral of you raise 10? You raise 11 over how do you? You raise 11 over 11, and we just have to um, plug in u back. So sine raised 9x over 9, sine raised 11x over 11, plus you may think, oh, things like that don't happen in life, you're wrong. Signs, cosines, very important differential equations you will see these a lot. The uh, real life in general. Everything um, goes uh, around that unit circle. We can't set that enough. Do we follow? But pretty straightforward, right? If you take the right substitution, a trigonometric integral in terms of sines and cosines by uh, very straightforward. Good? Yes, no, maybe, Jordan. Here is an example for you to try in our race. Uh, 
Ou ele está. Que me se joga. Okay, uh, many of you are getting it, uh, but few things you know. As I went around, the first mistake that I noticed is some of you split cosine. You don't split up an even power. Um, the only reason why we are trying to get an even power is the Pythagorean identity, the sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. What power does either sine have? That's an easy question. Alice, it's, it's, is it an even power or odd power? Even, what power does cosine have? Even, so what they want is get to an even power. So if I rewrite it in terms of an even power, then I can directly go to this identity. That is the key and that is the reason why we are splitting the odd power. Every odd number is one less or one more than an even number. Agreed? So, we're going to start here. I can rewrite. The fifth power of sine, fourth power times sine x, right? Your substitution must be the opposite function of the one you split. Well, I split the sign, so my substitution would be cosine. If u is cosine, du is negative sine x dx. Back to this. Let me rewrite this way. It is Mr. Negative, I believe, like the number two. Um, that is negative du. Do we agree? So I'm going to write this part as negative du. Um, that part is easy. U plays all. And that was the challenging part, um, or that is the part where we converted the odd power to even. I can write the fourth power of sine in terms of its second power, sine squared x squared. Good. Now, back to the identity. The diagonal identity states that sine squared x must be sine squared x equals one, which would mean sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x. This is a part where I saw some of you make mistakes. You already look at that square, and in your mind, somehow, magically, that square went away. You know, training. You see a square, you immediately say, oh, I already have a square, so I don't have to square the cosine. That square belongs in here. You have to first rewrite sine squared. So square must be there with cosine. It is not just one minus cosine x squared. So first step, whatever I wrote inside the square bracket, which is sine squared, now becomes one minus cosine squared x. Some of you forgot that too, don't forget times u raised four times negative the u. Um, now I can replace that as u squared, can we? Pull that negative out. Good. And um, at this step, 
many of you were successful in getting the angel pool, which is a good thing. And what did you use as you got it right? Oh, what? Chain rule. What? What are you talking about? <coughs> foil. Right, so you foil simplified. That is perfectly fine. But I'm not going to foil because I'm special. What is another way? Wait, but did I start answering? Well, you're pointing to one number and then to the first. I gave you a last reason to spoil it. This is it. You told us to spoil. Another tribute. That's what I said. That's exactly what I said. Pay your attention. <laughs> Looks like you didn't pay attention to that entire rant of me asking you to pay close attention. I did it. Listen it. Integration by parts. Thank you. Integration by parts. Part one, part two. Okay. Now, I said integration by parts because I'm special. Well, that is not the reason you might think I'm special, but the reason here is it is best to learn integration by parts. Reason being, what if that expression ended up being power of seven, uh, 60? That's okay. That's okay. You're going to foil one minus u squared raised yeah. 16. Really? Okay, if you do that and uh, come to my office, I'll give you an hour and 15 minutes. If you get it right, okay. I will add 10 points. You get one, one in 10 without a single mistake. And if all you, with, yes, I'll give you 10 points. What would I have to do with therapy? You have to do one minus u squared. <laughs> one minus u squared <laughs> Just that? to the power of 16. Just that. Yeah, yeah. you have to okay. do it by Without four. a single mistake. You made a mistake, it's fine. Even that's in like one. Okay. 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 Minus 10 if you get it wrong. Well, well, that's my problem. We're all men. <laughs> so the point I was trying to make is she is going to make a mistake. She is going to lose 10 points. Um, <laughs> it is going to happen because I don't know. Even I wouldn't pretend that. Um, if you have a big power, then it is painful to foil. And it is easier for me to simply go to integration by part. So the U part will be your raise four, the V part, one minus U squared squared. Yes? What is another way of doing this? U, V, V, 1 minus U squared squared, U raised 4 off to 2. One of them is easier. Which one? That one, why? Then the U to the 4 would go to 0. Huh? Then the U to the 4 would go to 0. Okay, U raised 4 would go to 0. You're saying no. I just feel like it's so hard to integrate the other part. It's easier to do the chain rule over the limit. Did you hear what? That's the chain rule 10 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were wrong 10 minutes ago, you're wrong now. <laughs> uh, so, so, we can't use, uh, well, we can use this, but it is going to be harder, like Caitlin said. This part, integrating, is painful. If you can't integrate without foiling, and all I'm doing is trying to avoid uh, the foiling approach. But I can recursively apply chain rule until it becomes zero. First time I do it, I would have negative two times one minus two y. Yes, times. Got the bro? So. Okay. So. Negative four u times one minus two squared. I guess I'll do a distribution now because otherwise I'd have to use product rules. 
over here, I need to integrate u raised 5 over 5, differentiate minus 4 plus 12 u squared, integrate u raised 6 over 30, differentiate 24 u, integrate u raised 7 over 420, differentiate 24, integrate. Three thousand three hundred and sixty. Good. Now, people who got the correct answer, is that the right approach? Was it that complicated? Yeah. No. The 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 approach. People who got it right. Did yeah. you do that? No. No. What did you do? Um, I just spoiled it. The same thing of oiling. So. I, when I started, I said, I'm going to do integration by parts because I'm special. I um, wanted to show you this because if you have a bigger power, such as 1 minus u squared phrase 11, foiling, not a good idea. But in a problem like this, if you chose integration by part, it will be painful to do because you have a whole lot of terms, but from the answers you have, the answer was very simple. How many terms did it have? Three. Yes. No. Those who have the correct answer. Three terms. So you might wonder, wow, my answer had correct answer has three terms. It's got a whole lot of them. Is it even possible? It is. If you simplify the huge expression that you get, it will reduce to those three terms but at the expense of three to four hours of your time. I wouldn't want to spend that time. I made my point. If that power is too large, integration might part. Otherwise, why make it harder? You raise four. One minus, uh, if you boil, you'd have one plus you raise four minus two you squared. Distribute, integrate, and you are done. Agreed? So you've got to pick and choose your battles. Um, integral of u raised 4 is u raised 5 over 5. Um, u raised 4 times u raised 4. Some of you wrote it as u raised 16. It is not u raised 16. It, it is it is u raised 8. Very good. Um, integral of u raised 8 is u raised 9 over 9. And last step, negative 2, u raised 4 times u raised uh, 2 is u raised 6 minus 2, u raised 7 over 7. There is a negative outside. Um, so distribute the negative, you get negative cosine raised 5x over 5. Negative cosine raised to nine yeah. x over nine minus two cosine raised seven x over seven negative becomes positive. Um, so that is my final answer. Plus c. Um, plus c. Thank you. Um, but me being <coughs> ACD, either right it in increasing powers or decreasing powers. If I'm going to rewrite it in increasing powers of cosine. It's good practice. <clears throat> and of course, plus C. Are we clear? What's up? Um, okay, so there is no cosine term, but the process or the idea is the same. My goal is get to that Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity has an even power, specifically two. Somehow I need to write it in an even power. So first step, I'm going to split it off by pulling one side out. 
I end up with a dot. Yes? Step number two. Whatever time I split, the opposite of that must be your substitution. So if I split sine, the substitution is cosine. If I split cosine, the substitution is sine. So u will be cosine x du negative sine x dx. Good. Integral sine raise 4x, I can rewrite this part as negative d. All I have to do is find a way to write um, this in terms of cosine, which is completely doable. That is why we rewrote it in an open power. Sine, fourth power of sine, is sine squared x, squared the whole thing. I know u has to be cosine. It hasn't showed up yet. But I know, I also know, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared x. Pull that negative out, du. From that point onward, the process is sort of similar to the previous problem. Um, 1 minus u squared, square again, don't forget that part. There is a minus outside and the u. What number should you use? Should you go with uh, integration by parts, even though it is doable? Should you try it here? No, it's going to get painful. <clears throat> so I'll just boil 1 plus u raised 4. Minus 2u squared du. Integral of 1 is u. u raised 4 will be u raised 5 over 5 minus 2 u cubed over 3. Just a few 10. I'll write it in increasing pounds. Um, so negative u plus 2 u cubed over 3 minus u raised 5 over 5. The last step would be to plug in our substitution. Negative cosine x plus 2 cosine cubed x over 3 minus cosine raised this power of x over 5 plus 6. Good. So there will be no confusion in terms of the answer if you have an odd power, even power scenario. But if both of them are odd, that's where confusion comes. Because not confusion, you've got to be careful to know how to go from one answer to the other, because you can take either sine or cosine as a solution.